Hi friends, I'm Katie. And I'm Lauren. And welcome to Okay, But Did You Know? A podcast where we talk about the TV and media that we love with a friend who's never seen it before. Today we're recapping and chatting about Bob's Burgers Season 2, Episode 5, Food Trekkin', and Episode 6, Dr. Yap. So we're going to start with the synopsis of Episode 5, Food Trekkin'. Food trucks have taken over the street of Bob's Burgers, much to Bob's dismay. Bob decides to start a food truck to steal back his own customers. This leads them on the journey of food trekking, and they attend a food truck festival where the kids create chaos. Chaos they did. They did. And as always, we like to start with the puns. Yes. So that's Improvable Improv Theater. Tickets on sale now. For the vacant storefront. Like a, the vacant storefront. That sounds like a terrible uh, improv troupe. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's a good name. No. And then the pest control truck. The pest control truck was Mice Girls, I think is what I got. It's, it says no Mice Girls because it's technically the sign with the, the, the circle uh, and the okay. line. So it's supposed to be no Mice Girls play on the like styled no nice girls. Oh, okay. Because so I think when I just got Mice Girls, I'm like, so Spice Girls? <laughs> no, it's, it's got the, 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 the crossing mm. of the out of the, you, you know. So I gotcha. guess that's supposed to be like no nice girls, but it's it is what it is. They they're not all going to be winners. No. Nah. And did you catch the burgers of the day? I only got one. There are two. There are two. Okay, so I only got one. The one I got was chorizo your own adventure burger. And this is of course you know choose your own adventure. Yeah. I love that. The other one was where have you been all my life burger comes with blah uh, dot 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 not clearly visible so we don't know what it comes with. Okay. But it's a play on the song, Where Have You Been All My Life? Mm-hmm. And I, I found out, just found out from you, that you did pick up that Megan Mullally is in this episode. I did. I heard, Her voice is fairly recognizable, because like, it's not the same voice she uses for Gail, obviously, yeah. which is I thought was funny that we're actually talking about two episodes that she's in. Mm-hmm. Gail really comes enough. around quite a bit. Yeah. But her voice is, like, for, for me at this point, her voice is fairly recognizable. And, like, I... So, sometimes, sometimes I just I'm like, oh, that's who that is. But sometimes I'm like, then we have the, the issue, like the case with um, the uh, the hostage episode where I clocked that Bill Hader was a robot before I clocked that Bill Hader was the hostage taker. I loved that because <laughs> I it, I had never clocked before that Bill Hader was no. also the robot. So that was new to me. Uh, did you? I'm sure you figured out the pun going on with the actual music. The the not music. God, I gave it away. Anyways. The food festival. <laughs> well, yeah, it was a re- it was a reference to Lollapalooza. I'm guessing. Yeah, because it's Lollapalooza festival. Yeah. It's it's for Lollapalooza. It's a reference to Lollapalooza, yeah. which is a fun word to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy mentions he is making a book, a blog that is being turned into a book. That that whole thing killed me. Yeah, this later happened for real when Cole Bowden's Burger of the Day Tumblr blog. Bob's Burger Experiment got turned into a real-life cookbook. Uh, I mean, okay, that's kind of normal, I think. I mean, Randy was trying to do the same thing. Yeah, I, maybe I just don't like Randy. Um, the male owner of the Mother Goose's Discount Petting Zoo from Sacred Cow appears at Lala... I'm not saying that again, I'm sorry. At the, at the food, food truck festival. festival. We're going to go with Food Truck Festival. Yeah. They were there. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> the store, Derriman's Liquor, is named after Bob's Burgers director, Bernard Derriman, who made his directing debut with Ooh. this episode. Ooh, very nice. So he got to put his name in there. Um, and the, the fun note... Uh, <laughs> Food truck seen or mentioned throughout the episode. I have another list. Oh, I love it. We have the something to talk about. Taco about. Mm-hmm. So that's taco truck. Try to. I can't talk today. Taco truck. We're recording this after. Uh, if anyone want, if anyone listened to the episode uh, talking about once upon a time one ten, um, the raw video, the raw recording of that is fifty five minutes. I didn't so, talk a lot. <laughs> uh, no, I did, but I think our brains are a little melted. Just a little bit, but that's okay because now the next one's called Walk of Shame. W O K. Oh God, the next one, Schindler's Fish. 
Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, at least it's Parv. That's true. Uh, of course, yeah. we have O to Soy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I wrote down O to Soy is a terrible name. It's terrible. Stop, drop, egg roll. Okay. Genghis Flan. I like it. Ain't Muffin to it. I heard that one, I think. Didn't Linda list that one? I think so. One is called Fudge Judy. (laughs) (laughs) The next one's worse. Oh, no. Non-consensual. Non. N-A-A-N. Oh, Oh, God. Oh, no. Um, No, no, no. Taquito is cheap. Okay. Talk to the ham. All right. Jeepers crepers. Uh Uh, This one's just here's looking at you. Okay. As in like corn? Oh, squid. My bad. Here's looking at you, squid. There was a comma. There we go. It was weird. I was like, what? Okay. Here's looking at you, squid. The squid was the way it was commaed. It looked like it was going Uh, on to the next one, which that's annoying. Gotcha. Yeah. Sherlock scones. <laughs> <laughs> Roast busters. Spaghetti. Spaghetti about it. I am clam. <laughs> Justice of the quiche. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I don't know why that one got me. Um, total eclipse of the tart. Oh, okay. That one's funny. <laughs> Dentist Rick's fish sticks. Okay. And the last one I think is my favorite. You dim some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then my favorite note for the entirety of this episode was mm-hmm. that the sexy pianist Tabitha Johansson is a parody of Tori Amos and her sexy song Icicle from 1994. Um... I did not know about this until I fe- did my research and mm-hmm. got to sit down and watch the video that I sent you. Yeah. Uh, in its entirety. Mm-hmm. But Bob's Burgers, they do this quite often. They like to pull real life references and yeah. just add them into the story. It happens quite often. And it's actually, I really enjoy it, but they do, yeah. they do this quite often. Um, this one got me a little bit. <laughs> yeah well it's like when you sent this me the video <laughs> when you sent me the video because in our script the link was placed with the um the description of required viewing for lauren prior to recording i had to watch it so i could understand this reference and i i honestly i can't believe that i didn't catch that it was a tori amos reference um <laughs> where was i going with this <laughs> I, I had no a, idea <laughs> i had a train of thought there where did it go <laughs> I had a whole thought. I lost it. I don't, oh, know, what, no. I don't know what happened to it. All right. We just got to find it. Yeah, we got to find it. But I think you, maybe it was going down to the line. I think I, it's like I watching this and like watching I had some of my looking back at my notes and like when they said about uh, what oil spill was about. And I went, yeah, no, that's not subtle. Nope. Not subtle at all. No. And they say that. <laughs> I'm still. How did you clock that? That was Megan Mullally. I did. I don't hear it. Sometimes, sometimes I'm very good with voices. Like there are times where like there, sometimes there's no matter what I'm listening to, I'm like, I cannot figure out who it is for the life of me. But sometimes I'm just like, oh, okay. We need a nice big round of applause for Megan Mullally though, for pulling that off though. Cause that could not have been, how did she do it? She is a talented lady. She's extremely talented. I have Mm -hmm. one like actual funny note. Um, but I did want to talk about Randy for a second. I remember telling you when we first were introduced to Randy that I was like, oh, this is our trust fund baby. Now you get uh-huh. to see what I mean about Randy yep. being our trust fund baby. He mm-hmm. he just keeps going through different – because Randy still comes back. This is not the last bit of Randy. Oh, joy. And just wait till you see what he's doing next. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. Because for some odd reason, he keeps just finding Bob. I don't know why. I don't know how. But it keeps coming back to Bob. Mm-hmm. So there are lots of Facebook groups out there for all the different fandoms of all the different shows. And there is one. It's a very large group that I've been in forever. I don't even go on mm-hmm. Facebook anymore. But I know about this group and it still exists. And one of my favorite things when I was actually partaking in the group and talking with everybody is they use beef curtains as a happy birthday so instead of anybody saying happy birthday in the group if you say it's your birthday everyone gets to yell beef curtains at you 
Well, okay then. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> or is it the fact that it's actually the term beef curtains? I think it's the fact that it's the term beef curtains. I'm like, okay. <laughs> We're going to laugh through most of this episode and I'm not apologizing, but I cannot fine. wait Honestly, to that's your fine. notes. That's the, that's the mood. I, I took quite a few on this one, I will be honest. Oh, and we will link um, the reference, the Tori Amos video yes. in our show notes, and we'll post this on social media when the time comes, because yeah. oh, yes. I think everybody should be subjected to this after having to watch it. Oh, definitely. It's 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 interesting. Mm-hmm. No, it I is. I did not know that was a thing. Yeah, I, I still, I'm like, I should have, I should have figured that out. How, when did you see this? That was the year I was born. <laughs> No, I haven't seen that clip, but I should have figured out that she was it was a Tori Amos reference. Like they, they look identical. They do look identical. So I should I just musically wise, I think I should have figured that out. But oh well. Um, let's see some of my some of my funnier notes. I I I, th- I think I'm funny in this one, but I mean, who knows? Um, who knows really? Um, my body, my rules. Oh, I like Jean the feminist. <laughs> right? Jean is, Jean is our, uh, a feminist to us all. I love, yeah. these are moments that I really love Jean. Mm-hmm. Some of his lines are just absolutely amazing. And you're like, okay, yeah. he's not too bad. But then he does something stupid and you're like, never mind. Yeah. But that's, that's nine year old boy. It is. Um, it's a good thing that you did have that list of all the food trucks because I wrote down, there's too many puns to keep track. I was going to try and then I saw it just it was going too quickly. So I just decided no, we're not going to do that. I am happy to have provided that for you because there's some. Yeah. I'm still dying over you dim sum, you lose some. That's a good one. I like it. And also it sounds delicious. Yes, I want some dim sum now. This yeah. show always makes me hungry. Yeah. Um, oh, when the first scene with Bob and Randy, I just read, oh, dear God, Bob and Randy just kiss already. Right. Also, though, the scene where they're in the food truck and Randy yells that he doesn't want to tie a virgin and Tina's like, me either. I have an idea. And Bob's just like, no. No. (laughs) Bad Tina. Down, Tina. (laughs) Down. I was like, when when Teddy was setting up their their food truck and telling him that, you know, that you can't uh, have the truck running and the grill going at the same time, I, I just wrote down Chekhov's fireball. Like, I wrote it down. That's what I called it. Like literally three seconds before Gene. I love up. that. Like the second they mentioned, I'm like, "Well, that's, that's gonna, happen. gonna happen." More um, than once. <clears throat> yeah, it did. It happened twice, and then the grease trap also came back around, which I thought was very, I thought was very smart. This is a very, very well that. written episode. It was. This was a very cohesive episode. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, we can talk about notes. We can talk about stats later. This one is not as evident. No. <laughs> As with the as, as the once one time one, there was no hiding. It's okay what that if this was. episode's not as long. <laughs> <clears throat> it's that's fair. It's okay. <laughs> um, the cat burglars were not an improv group. <laughs> Bring it back around to the improv theater. Yeah, improbable. See, they do pretty good about pulling things together, and it gets better as it goes along. Yeah. Food truck festivals probably are where most of the money is. Like, like logically, like the that kind of like traveling around to kind of like find, I guess, those conglomerates. I don't disagree with that with that take. That like, yeah, food truck festivals are probably where they're going to make a lot of money. Like that'll make up for a lot of like maybe downtime or something like that. So I did find that to be like that. That's fairly evident. I feel like you'd have to park like in a specific area to start getting customers. If they start realizing you're going to be there, then more people see it and they're like, okay, maybe I should try them this day or whatever. Yeah. But at least with a festival, it's like everyone is there to eat food. Yeah. So like if you're like in like a well, I guess, well situated area, like you're going to be doing a lot of business like all day or all weekend, really. Oh, yeah. So. It's very smart. Why is Gene handcuffed duct taped in? Like, why is he not only seat belted in, but also handcuffed? (laughs) I don't have an answer to that. Like out of the uh, out of the three of them, I would have expected that for Louise, not for Gene. I would love that Louise is still so young, though, that she's still sleeping. Yeah. Oh, wait. Gene's not nine. He's 11. I said nine earlier. You did say nine. Gene's 11. Mm. Louise is nine. Look, I have kids of my own. My brain is already mush as it is. I'm not, I can't even remember birthdays half the time, okay? It's fine. Oh, no. I, I, I was scheduling an appointment for the kids, and the lady asked me for Eric's birthday, and I was like, give me a second. 
I gotta remember it. Oh no. The the intake nurse at urgent care uh, asked, like, did like the confirmation thing of like asking me for my birthday, and I gave it to her. She's like, oh, happy like happy early birthday, and I'm had him like it's like in six weeks, but okay. <laughs> I was say your birthday is still. I still have time. You have time. It's the end of October. I have time. It's the end of October. No idea what I'm getting you yet. It's fine. But I'm working on it. I have to get get you my head circumference. Circumference. I do need your head circumference. I'll measure my head. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> that that was from Lauren, not my husband. My <laughs> that ass- just sounds like something Stephen would say. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm talking about a hat here, people. <laughs> you are talking about a hat. I just have a very interesting husband. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So, what? Any other? Fun I do. Notes? I still have a few more. Um. It's like okay. Trashing the other trucks surely will never backfire on them. Right, and that's that's what I meant with the kids creating chaos. Yeah. Like, let's just, and that's very much a Louise move of I'm just gonna go insult everyone's yeah. food. Um, and I just love the whole storyline of Tina trying to be someone different and experimenting that she's someone else, because that is yeah. also a very 13-year-old girl thing to do. Mm-hmm. That one paired with, it's not a lie if you lie to vegetarians, which I just thought was funny. It's a it's funny, but it's bad as someone who's been vegetarian and vegan in her life. Yeah, it's not a great it's sentiment, bad. but it's still. I, I just thought no. the two of those together. I'm like, that's that's the, that's your chaos right there. Um, my last look. It's it's a funny joke. Mm-hmm. It's a funny joke. Yes, but just don't do it to your no, friends. Don't don't lie to vegetarians, please don't. My very last funny note is, oh dang, I wanted the crowd to get Randy. Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been I awesome. Love that. I have to agree with yeah. that one. Mm-hmm. So, but I really, I, <laughs> I loved that little ending though of them having to walk down the street and they're all walking together and Randy's still sticking with them. But just the, it was a very good family scene. I felt it was so cute. It was so adorable, and that's that feeling. Yep. I don't know if you feel the same feeling I do, but that feeling at the end of that episode yeah. is very much of like how Bob's Burgers makes me feel in a whole. Mm. And it makes me very, very happy. I just, yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Through chaos, there is family. Exactly. Um, but I'm very excited to hear your score of this one. Because yeah. I know I, I did hype this season up of being mm-hmm. like, it's a really good season. It's only nine episodes, but it's a really good season. Yeah. Uh, for this one, I gave it a seven for plot. I thought plot was very solid. It was a lot of chaos. Similar for character. I gave it a seven. It lost some points just for Randy because quite frankly... I could do without him. It's Randy. It's Randy. Um, and I gave it an 8 for personals. This one actually, this one got a 22. 22? That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. I gave this one um, an 8 for plot. I enjoy the plot. And I love, you know me, I love the chaos. Mm-hmm. Uh, character 7, because Randy. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the, personally, it's an 8. Okay. The personal's an 8. So this one was actually just a 23 for me. Okay. Solid episode. So it's solid episode. All right. Then we have season two, episode six, Dr. Yap. Gail is on new meds. She volunteers to pick up a loopy Bob after a dentist appointment. Bob mistakes Gail for his wife and kisses her, creating an awkward situation for Bob when Linda asks him to continue the facade. The family joins Dr. Yap on a skiing trip with the hopes Gail will become more interested in the dentist. The kids compete over a jawbreaker, constantly switching it back and forth. Ew. Um... But as always, we start with the puns. And so did you catch the vacant storefront? I wrote down stickers for men. Yes. So it says stickers for men and has a sign that says now open. Is that all it says? That's all it says. Stickers for men. Yeah. I don't, I didn't know. Because why not? That stickers could be for men or women or any gender identity. I mean, I guess, I guess, I mean. You can genderify anything that doesn't need to have gender. I saw a meme, or not really a meme, it was an actual menu um, in a Facebook group that I'm in that is just, um, are the straights okay? Um, um, wait, what? It was a, gen- <laughs> basically, yeah, it's a Facebook group, that are, are the straights okay? It's where people share memes of things. It's hilarious. Oh, um, and the menu, and it's a real menu, it was two entries for a charcuterie board. One was the she shed charcuterie, and one was the man cave charcuterie. They are identical charcuterie boards. The phrasing of them is a little different. 
the women's one the, the she shed one uh says it pairs nicely with about with with wine the man cave one says it pairs nicely with beer but like it's ultimately it's a pretzel with meats cheeses um some fruit um some dipping sauces charcuterie board the man cave one was like 4250 which is a lot but I'm, I'm gonna guess it was like a big thing that you're meant to share with people the she shed one was 4670 so not only is it genderifying food that shouldn't be gendered it's also pink tax yeah no that's correct are the straights okay are they okay in my in my experience no what the hell it's meat it's and weird. cheese i don't think it matters uh-huh. what you identify as if you're eating meat and cheese i mean unless you identify as a vegetarian then i'm worried but still well, yeah but at that point i would just get the man cave one because like it's cheap yeah. and it's the same thing i mean i do that with razors regardless because you know i do that with clothing half the time <laughs> i mean i'm wearing a man's hoodie i have to be i'm, I'm with you on that one all right so, so, so um I'm right. the straights are not okay no, they're not. I think you liked the uh, pest control truck, though. I did. It's the witch, Wicked Witch of the Pest. And we already know what that reference is. I'll get you, my pretty. There it is. I should be wearing my wick, my my stay wicked, uh, my pretty sweatshirt. Dang it! I, oh man, it's it's got it's well, it's actually it was a fundraiser from uh, the 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 actor who plays the Wicked Witch of the West. Um, it was her fundraiser because she loves Starbucks. So it looks like a Starbucks thing, but instead of the mermaid, it's a witch. And then it says, stay wicked, my pretties. And every time I wear it, people think I got it in Salem. And I just go, yes, because it's not worth explaining that it was part of a fundraiser for a TV show. Or it was a fundraiser run by an actor. I think you should send me, you should send me a mirror selfie of that sweatshirt. Just saying. Next time I wear it. Next time I wear okay. it, I will. Uh, did you notice, though, that the witch is stomping on the cockroaches on the van? I didn't. I was t- trying to type it out before it went away. Yeah, it's it's stepping on the cockroaches. Ooh. And there is only one burger of the day. Okay, so I did get all the burgers. You got all the burgers! <laughs> I got all of them. It's fun to eat at the Rye MCA. Burger comes on rye with mustard, cheese, and avocado. Um, which... Quite frankly, the avocado seems a bit excessive. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do mustard and avocado. I wouldn't do... I think they're... But they're just going with the YMCA. Now that I'm reading it, they added the avocado because not only is it... It comes on rye, it's... Yeah. That, that's the MCA. That's why it's mustard, cheese, and avocado. I'm now figuring that out. But um, it doesn't sound all that Well, like the rye and the mustard make sense. Enticing. That would taste good. The avocado is the one thing that throws yeah. it off for me for the entirety of it well because uh, honestly if the i'm um, honestly yeah if you left off the avocado my first thing my first inkling with it would be that it's like a reuben based like inspired burger. exactly that's what i was thinking but then you had the avocado and i'm like it's no longer it no longer because you don't need cheese and avocado Mm-mm. but actually one thing i noticed because we mentioned on the last bob's one about the special burger being the same price Mm-hmm. At least with these, I noticed they were five ninety five, and a regular burger oh, is five dollars. Have... Is five dollars on the menu behind? I wonder Teddy, if I had usually. the price wrong. Possibly, yeah. Because I don't know if I, I don't know if it's been like that all the time, but especially in these two episodes, they were five ninety five. I think I said five twenty five. I think I said okay. five twenty five, not five ninety five. Okay. I think that's where gotcha. I messed up. Because yeah, the normal burger isn't like yeah. only five dollars, but I think I said I thought the special was like five twenty five, which means I was wrong. Yeah. It's five ninety five. Um. So, and did you pinpoint who is playing Dr. Yap? That one I did not. Um, I hope I am pronouncing his name correctly, but it's the uh, Ken Jeong. Oh, okay. I, if you don't know who that is. No, I know who Ken Jeong is. Yeah. Okay. He's our guy from like the hangover and, and community, all the fun thing. Yeah. Community. He's a phenomenal actor. Mm-hmm. He's absolutely hilarious. I love him as a comedian. Um, I am fairly certain I pronounced his name right. And if I did not, yeah, and he's I'm sorry. And he is actually a doctor. He is actually, he's a, actually doctor. a doctor. Yes, you know I love that you know this. I do. Yeah, so, so, every once in a while I do pay attention to some slight pop culture. Exactly. I mean, that's like Mayim Balak. She is also like has. Her yeah, PhD. she's a doctor. Of, yeah, yeah. Hers is. I think her PhD is in neuroscience, yes. and her character was a PhD of neurobiology. Yes. Um, 
one thing I'm watching, this is so off topic, but it's similar, is um, I'm watching the show uh, now. It's a CBS sitcom. Uh, it's the same people that did Big Bang Theory. It's Bob Hart's Abishola. Oh. It's about, um, it's, a re- it's really cute. I keep seeing clips of it on TikTok. So eventually I found it. It's on, um, the first three seasons are on Max and the last season, uh, the most recent season is on Paramount+. Plus. But um, it's about a Nigerian uh, nurse who falls in falls in love and is in a relationship with one of her patients from the first episode um one of the creators uh is gina yashere who is a british comedian she is nigerian and they put so much of like her um her upbringing into the show like to the point of like i've heard her comedy bits so much i see them in the show like they very specifically just pulled them out of her oh, life like the joke of you should you should uh, of, like, text me this so i can watch it i will yes um, cause the thing of like Nigerians, like you've got three options for, um, for, for occupations, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, uh, or an engineer. And so she became an engineer because that's what you do, but then she wanted to go into comedy. So she just did that. I love but she it. became an engineer first. She became an engineer first and then she went into comedy, bring it back to Ken Jong, who became a doctor first mm-hmm. and then he went into comedy. I had a point. It wasn't a complete tangent. You usually have a point. Not always. <laughs> so do you tend to watch anything with subtitles? Constantly. I don't oh, watch things without subtitles. Oh, goodness. Okay, I am also the because, same. I have to watch everything yeah, with subtitles. Because, yeah, because either I'm may, maybe I'm just not paying attention or also sometimes I want to watch and eat things that are crunchy. So for me, I started doing it after I had my daughter because I had to either watch things on really low volume so I didn't wake her up and you get bored breastfeeding, which is saying that like, cause they mm-hmm. fall asleep on you and then you're stuck. Um, yeah. and so I would, st- I started doing that when she was a baby so that I didn't wake her up. And then it got to the point you have a toddler and toddlers are so loud. The only way you know it's happening is if you have subtitles on cause then the child is too loud. And so yeah. I now have just, I cannot watch anything without subtitles. I'll go like, if we go to a movie, nice big screen, it's okay. I can do it. But yeah. I prefer subtitles. My husband will literally turn something on, even if I've seen it a million times. He will make sure to try. He usually remembers to turn the subtitles on, but sometimes he doesn't. And I just look at him and go, I don't know what they're saying. He could have it. Be, there could be no children. There can be no interruption. Nothing. I still need the subtitles because I'm like, I don't know what they're yep. saying. I need the words, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you do yep. pick up on things a lot more mm-hmm. with watching with subtitles. And this is where I have this one is... The Dr. Yap names his jacuzzi jacuz, which is not mm-hmm. just a, like, oh, it's a funny word. It is a reference to the Emile Zola's open letter jacuz um, that was published in uh, 1898 in the in a oh. newspaper with something that was called the Dreyfus Affair. That's just a little history mm-hmm. lesson. I am a history buff. I'm not going to go into what the Dreyfus Affair is because <laughs> I love you and you don't need that right now. But if you are, if anybody that. is ever curious... Uh, it's an actual historical reference. It is not just him making fun wordplay because in the subtitles mm-hmm. they actually spell it like that, jacuz. The cuz Okay. Because in French jacuz means I accuse. I still actually speak a little bit of French. I'm proud of that one. Um I took I, Spanish in high school. Uh, je parle français. Un petit peu. Lo siento. <laughs> So I only have a few notes. You probably have more than I do. But my first one, I think we can both agree on, is I will forever hate dentists trying to hold conversation with you while doing work on your mouth. Yep. Just no. Why are you asking me questions? Like, exactly. you're in my mouth. I can't answer. You're doing things. And I know it's probably like good bedside manner or whatever. But seriously, yeah, I'm say sure. hello, get to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're trying to like calm people down and everything like that. Cause not like most people don't, I hate the dentist, but like, no, we, we deal with it. But like, we can't answer the questions if you're asking me, like, oh, so where'd you go on vacation as you're sticking instruments in my mouth and poking at my gums? Like, right? Uh-huh. The last time I went, they were doing the deep cleaning. And so like they had numbed me. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, yeah, sticking me with the needles, numbing me, trying to have a conversation with me. And I'm like, dude, bad yeah, timing. That's- no, that's one thing I like about my dentist is um they do they actually they have TVs like mounted to the ceiling mm-hmm. and it's like they have like some like streaming services so like for a while all I would do is I would just watch Parks and Rec because Ooh, it was good I did 
with with subtitles on because that way I could figure out what was going on because they're doing stuff you can't hear it and I no no one ever turned the volume like turned the volume up so I would just like I I've seen it so many times mm-hmm. I don't really need to pay attention to it I can read the subtitles because also I would take my glasses off so like if I can't see I I can't actually see but I can kind of see what's going on yeah yeah they have and it was art, like, like it would calm me down corner. they have ours yeah. like in the corner because I have to go back mm-hmm. soon to do the other side. Yeah. I don't want to. Uh, speaking of teeth, the swapping of the jawbreaker. Oh, God. I'm a middle child of three. I can guarantee you we never did shit like that. No, me and my brother did not do this either. This is this is what lost some of my personal points. Oh, yeah. No, I was. What's no? Could we not? Can we not? No. Please. I did not like no. that. Uh, <laughs> the kids are really upset that dad can't pee, on, uh, pee in the shower. Yeah. Like, they were so upset about that. I know. They had such strong opinions about it. <laughs> like, just let them pee in the shower. It goes down the drain. Yeah. I don't know. Kids. I, d- I never. Yeah, I never fully understood the desire to do so. It, maybe it's a man thing, and I don't know. It might be a man thing. It might be a man thing. Uh, it, for us, it's different. <laughs> peeing yeah. while standing up is not exactly a thing for us yeah um and my last note is just no one should listen to this man on how to get women no one no no i wrote down the prince of persuasion reminds me of a douchebag from an episode of criminal minds that makes sense like i don't remember if i don't remember the context of the episode but i remember there was an episode that involved them going to a class of like a guy that was teaching people how like teaching teaching people teaching men how to pick up women and like the guy was like full on like guy liner goatee oh no i want to say it was magician themed Uh, oh god i don't i don't i don't think he was the killer but i think it was someone who took one of his classes that's the killer that's depressing yeah Oh no! But that's so are most episodes of Criminal Minds. I that's that's fair. I've never watched it all the way through. No, I think I made it. I I didn't make it all the way through either. I think I made it after Morgan left, which I don't remember what season that is. See, my brain's trying to remember who Morgan is. The Shamar Moore character, the one that would always flirt with um oh, Garcia. Yes, thank you. I that love their. Di- I love. I know. I love their dynamic. I mostly watch it for her and Paget Brewster. That's fair. Because I, I, I am me. What? So, 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 what are your notes on this episode? <laughs> we have. I hate the dentist because, of course, of um, course. said, "Oh no, do not give Louise forty-five minutes worth of energy." <laughs> That's a bad idea. Even forty-five minutes of a five-hour energy. Don't do it. Mm-mm. Uh, oh God, Tina drank them the the drinks from the beginning like no at that point i was like nope this competition is getting going way too far nope that's a big no okay so the fact that you said that dr yap is ken jong i wrote down dr yap sounds familiar but i can't place his voice oh you almost had it though you almost had everything pinpointed for this episode i know I, I, i knew it um dude you are wearing gloves you cannot touch a guitar and then go back to medical practice yeah let's not let's not do that please and then stop saying pound town. Don't like that. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, this one was funny, actually. Why does Gail remind me of Tootie from the Fairly Odd Parents? Shit. She does. She kind of. She kind of does. V- yeah, it's very similar. Damn it, to Lauren. Anna. You, you gotta stop doing that to me. Sorry. I'm never gonna unsee it. Oops. This is the, that that's Lauren's My voice for I'm not actually sorry, but sorry? Uops. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> usually, usually what happens it's more fun to say it with the accent. It sorry? is more fun and it makes it a little bit nicer. <laughs> it does. It makes it sound like I'm actually sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if anybody is questioning why this episode is so chaotic, just listen to the previous episode. Even if you don't like yeah, Once Upon a Time, to- just listen to the previous episode and it'll explain all. Yeah, listen, to episode- listen to episode 19. You'll understand why our brains are goo. Oh my goodness. Because Lauren went on many, 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 many tangents. I'm very proud of Lauren, though. Any other? Um, I did. 
I do. I have a I have Yay. a couple. I said I did love um I loved Gail's cover of One Way or Another. I thought I thought that was phenomenal. That was amazing. It was such a good cover and it was so well played. And just more Megan Mullally. Like we got a lot of Megan Mullally and it was very wonderful. Yeah. Yep. Um I think my very last one, my last one I think it's funny is like now we're doing a Cabin in the Woods horror parody. This episode has been all over the place. Would you would you like to know that Dr. Yap is a returning character? I'm okay with that. I found I found him interesting. He's not annoying. He's interesting. Give it time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the I love the actor though. Ken Ken is wonderful. He is. He does Dr. an amazing Ken. job. Mm-hmm. Dr. Ken, yes. So we like we like Dr. Ken here. It's it's very funny. I feel like we've been more so obsessing over the guest characters than we have yeah over the actual main cast because this was a really good like family episode too Mm -hmm. especially of them trying to explain what they meant about kissing the sister yeah (laughs) like to children and i'm Mm -hmm. just sitting there the whole time like no that that pans out like you come up with whatever you can in that moment and hope Mm -hmm. that it sticks and they don't ask more questions yep you just come up with any explanation humanly possible and move on and I definitely learned with like having children, there's a, a saying that I learned years ago. It's don't answer kids questions that they don't ask. Yeah. Like don't give them explanations that they did not ask for. Yep. Because there are so many moments in life raising kids where they're, they'll ask you a question. And so you need to clarify before you give them an answer yeah. of where that thought process is going. Because mm-hmm. if they could be asking, hey, where are babies come? Where, where do babies come from? It's like, do you really want to know? Or... Or are you just curious about something? And they could be something they're like, oh, well, I saw a bear cub. That's a whole nother answer. Yeah. So, like, but also if they see a bear cub, run. Oh, well, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's all my notes for this one. Yeah. I don't have any. This one didn't have as many, like, fun things to talk about. It's okay. We um, had our we had our list of puns for, like, the last one. We did one. have our list of puns uh this one just i really love that we are introduced to dr yap mm-hmm. he's a returning character he's a lot of fun yeah it's very interesting watching gail who is always so obsessed with like not being able to find a man literally having another man like interested in her and she's uh-huh. just like oh i don't care yeah she's just she she's very she's very tunnel vision she's very focused but also the awkwardness of Linda telling her husband, yeah, yeah, just keep flirting with my sister. No. Yeah, I wonder, I really do wonder where that thought process is. I, I does not compute. Uh, yeah, no. So that one was definitely a weird one, but yeah. it's, it's not a terrible episode. It's still funny. It's an introductory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. What did you score this? So this one I gave an eight for plot because this was, this was chaos in all the best ways. Um, I gave it an eight for character again because I, I, for for how weird Gail is, I find her very enjoyable. Oh, I like that. As opposed to other characters that are like weird and annoying, and I'm like, go away. I enjoy her. Maybe it's because it's Megan Mullally. I don't really know. I feel like it being Megan Mullally definitely is like a palate cleanser because you're just yeah. like she's this talented. Yeah. Um, and I gave it a seven for personal. It would have probably been eights across the board had it not been for the jawbreaker. So this one got a twenty three. <laughs> Oh, uh, this one got a uh, seven for plot for mm-hmm. me. It's chaotic, but Dr. Yap, while I love Ken, Dr. Ken, mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of Dr. Yap, but I think it's because I know more about him. Yeah. Uh, character, I gave seven mm-hmm. for the same reason. Yeah, kind of like how I try to like not take what I know about Rumpelstiltskin against him. <laughs> I'm trying not to. This is me trying not to. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. And then my personal is an eight, so I gave this a 22 okay so not not bad no two solid episodes so um last week we uh, with burger boss we had that emulator so um what was uh steven's final score before he gave up Eleven thousand six hundred. he said he died on the okay. lava level okay i've yet to go back and try it again i had small children mm-hmm. to take care of so i think i'm gonna try again soon but the whole time he's playing, because I remember going back out from getting my son back to sleep and I walk in and he's like, what did you say her last score was? I was like, what? Well, first I said it was like 2000 something. Yeah. I was like, but she just told me that she got up to like over 4000. And he was just like, how? That's it? 
Like, that was his reaction. I was like, be nice. He's like, I, I am to, being nice. How is this it? I don't need to take this from the ancient one that is your husband. The ancient one. I am telling him that. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> hey, he's even, like, I mean, he's like, what, he's nine years older than you? So that's like, he's yeah. at least 12 years older than me. So I think I can say that. It's fine. He made the joke recently that he's about to no longer be with a 20-something year old, which is apparently a thing for him because he's with a younger woman because I'm turning 30 soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made the joke. He's like, yeah, but we'll be like in the same age group for a little while. It's not the same. And, I, uh, and but, but then he goes, but then I'm turning 40 in a couple of years. So then it gets better again. I was like, you just got to stop talking. Yeah. Just shush. <laughs> So, so that's what I deal with. Yeah. That's fair. Well, like, I like to just jokingly continually remind uh, my partner that she's turning 30 at the end of this year. She's, she's, uh, <laughs> she's about a month older than you. I know. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not ready to turn 30. It's okay. You will survive. I hope so. You will. I think my final score when I stopped playing was 6,400. I think I also nice. died on the I died on the lava level, but I got to about 6,400. The only thing I didn't like about the emulator was that when you die, even though you go back to the beginning of the level you're on, your score resets to zero. Yeah, that's what Steven told me. I didn't know that. Yeah, so like it, I, I, I would feel better about it if I went back to your score when you started the level. Because mm -hmm. then I wouldn't feel so discouraged the first time I die because you really can't die if you want to maintain a high score. Yeah, you can't die at all, and then you're kind of Which is not how arcade games work. I think it, that's just the way mm -hmm. that they designed the emulator. Maybe there wasn't a way to get it to reset to the previous score without resetting entirely. That's okay. At first, I had to remind Steven that he's actually supposed to get the tomatoes. Oh, was he avoiding them? And then all I... He didn't realize that those were tomatoes uh, at first. Oh, okay. He was, I was like, hey, you want to get that tomato, right? And he's like, wait, what is that? It's like the big coins in the Mario games. You're <laughs> I was like, it said at the beginning, collect the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You should know this. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> he's, like I said, he's almost 40. What do we, what do you do with we him? Can, we can forgive the memory loss. It's fine. I love you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. The best part is you are not actually being me. I need to no. uh, also yeah. clarify. This is not us being mean because this is my husband's humor. This is all in This jest. is how we talk. This is how we, her, him and I, this is how we speak to each other. I actually have a funny story. When we first started dating, we would roast each other constantly, no matter who was around. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's how we talk to each other. And it's so much fun. We still do it to this yeah. day. And we had a friend that we were hanging out with one night. And we're going back and forth, just roasting the hell out of each other. To the point the guy's looking at us like, do y'all need a minute? Like, are you guys okay? And we're both staring at him in pure seriousness of like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? There's nothing happening. People don't understand. And of course, he's sitting there like, you guys are like really mean to each other. And Steven's just like. No, this is how I tell her I love her. And, and it was just this poor man. If if you can't do that with <laughs> your partner, said, who can you? Exactly. And we still do it to this day. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's you know, a week out of the month where I'm like, don't come near me. I will hurt you. But yeah. any other time of day, yeah, no, it's this is this is my life. Yep. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. No, nah, not at all. Thank you all for listening. Join us next time when we discuss Once Upon a Time, episode 111, Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. Don't forget to like, rate, and follow the podcast wherever you listen so you can be notified every time we publish a new episode. And follow us at obdyk underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. This has been an episode of OK, But Did You Know? A TV and media podcast. It was hosted by Katie and Lauren and edited by Katie.